time next year, year we'll, we'll be, be millionaires. millionaires. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be the beginning of the video. It's Monday morning. We're in the yard. And the time is quarter past six and it is three degrees. It's so cold. I'm standing up by the offices and this morning we are doing random breathalyzer tests on all the drivers as they come in. We're not trying to catch anyone out. We're not suggesting that any of the drivers here are drinking. We just want to ensure that everybody is going on the road safely. It could be something as innocent as somebody having a beer last night while they're sat down watching the telly. They haven't drunk a lot of water and their body hasn't processed it. But if somebody has come in here on Monday morning over the limit, we cannot let them go out behind a steering wheel. Hopefully we don't catch anyone but if we do they'll be told to go home for the day and it will serve as a warning in the future to keep everybody on the road safe so how do we get on start the half five this morning last test done by five past six everyone blew zero everyone every single person blew zero everything's recorded scan them upload them onto the cloud and that's that really so we've got a few lorries parked up this morning now but we've had two or three people calling sick and the concrete lorries are not starting some of their jobs until sort of 9.30. I think a few people are probably waiting to see where the temperature goes before they commit to their poor for today. There's no lorries parked up because of alcohol intoxication this morning. Good morning, George. How's it going? Okay. What's up? I'm waiting for flow. Work, work, work then, isn't it, George? Yeah, <laughs> no, no, don't worry about quiet. We have plenty of work, George. Don't worry. I just discussion with George, who's going to drop off an eight yard skip. He needs to have a bag of sand, a bag of 10 mil shingle, and a bag of type one in the skip. So, the project he's going to, he's going to drop the skip with the bags in it and they're going to shovel the material out of it and then they're going to fill up the skip with the muck that they excavate on friday when we spoke to the client and they booked it on they only asked for the 10 mil shingle but they messaged yesterday and said they want the other two bits of material so george is just waiting around until flo gets in so he can get the sand and the type one on morning flo morning, morning. george is about to leave and he's put a second skip on underneath. We're going to drop the top skip, the three bags of material, and then we're going to go to another job with the eight yard skip underneath. George is good to go. The volumetric is completely sprayed. All the artwork is done. Now we need to move that lorry to Southern Vulcanizing to do some work on the auger. However, when Jay Radford was spraying it, they took the water tank off and we have a repair to make on the water tank what we were gonna leave, but as they took it off, I think we're gonna do it while the water tank is not on the lorry because it's a lot easier. It's basically the neck of it right at the bottom where it connects to the pipe. So Ben is gonna go around to Jay Radford. He's gonna take the water tank and drop it round to Rhymer so they can make the repair. Show nothing. No. Now you hold it here. Ah, 9.4 meters. We need a couple of measurements of some kit in the yard, and I'm going to take a picture of each one. Ah, you see, I thought this was 10 foot. This is 8 foot. We've got to call this 2.5. Oh, 7.3. Why are they all weird sizes, man? These are 3.2. <laughs> it's cold out here, man. Ah, flow is refueling the L860. You see, I thought these were three meters, but they're 3.2. <laughs> 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 Come on, mate. Don't worry. Don't worry about that. <laughs> so five, five, and 4.8 is 9.8. What are you saying, 2.5? No way, it's got to be three meters. <laughs> we're both wrong. 2.8, kitchen and mess room. How wide is this? You on the edge? 
That's not to the beam. No, the red beam is a steel that we put in place to support my office, so my office didn't sit directly on top of it. Click here to watch the video where we refurbished this shipping container to make my new executive office. That's a work one, yeah? Do I know how to work one, yeah? You should yeah. consider comedy as a career. You said this operations thing's not really working out. I, I never said operations weren't working out, I'm saying consider comedy, because you're a funny guy. <laughs> comedy, you won't be here much longer. <laughs> Did you buy them things I sent you? Why not? I didn't get into half nine or quarter ten last night, so no. It's very late to get home on a Sunday. It's a school night, Terry. I know, yeah. Why have you got off shave on? Why are you fighting it? <laughs> I really enjoy this. Terry's daughter, Cora, got her this set uh, for Christmas, like Peppa Pig, but it's like a shop. You've got all the things in the shop which you can buy. As soon as Cora got it, obviously she wanted her dad to install it. Let's look at the video here. I love it! What'd you say? <laughs> she was very happy, yeah? But ever since she got it, all she wants to do every day is for Terry to be a customer in the shop repeatedly. All day, every day, Terry has to come up with a new shopping list and he has to go to the shop. They're not customers. What are they, Terry? Customies. They're called customies. <laughs> and how's it working out in that shop? It's tiresome. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got two bananas, two oranges, two apples, uh, a box of cereal and some milk. To buy it. and a pineapple juice and a pineapple juice yeah what doesn't she have in stock chicken thighs <laughs> <laughs> so what i sent terry was a couple of links so cora could pack out her shop a little bit more because you sent it to me now on the work phone no no, no i sent it to your personal <laughs> phone i sent it to your personal oh, phone did you? yeah i did don't try it <laughs> the custom east is always right <laughs> i mean my friendly scania salesman have you called to tell me the fantastic price that you're going to offer me on lorries? I wasn't going to give you the price over the phone because I haven't got it to hand. To talk about new lorries and their prices, I am always around to talk to my, my trusty Scania salesman. I'm not going to fall off my chair again when I get these prices like last time, am I? No, I'm going to bring a ratchet right. strap. You're going to bring... <laughs> ratchet strap me to the desk. Now, let's measure this way bridge, yeah? If I get wet in there, it's, I'm dragging everyone with me. Just about 3.8. How are we doing, Maddie? You getting on all right? Happy New Year. Happy New Year. What are you doing? I just got some sand. Oh, some sand. What size do you reckon that is? I reckon it's a 20. Let's go. Ooh, this is 5.8. What? Why would the container be 5? What have I been buying in here, man? 14.5 plus 6.6. 21.1, yeah? Three meters. Have you got something you can hold in front of you? Sixteen meters. Sixteen meters by four point five is the bagging area. All right. Thank you very much for your help, Liam. You've been most helpful. Needed a couple of dimensions for something I'm planning. Without all the dimensions, you can't fully like dot things out and work out what you're going to move around. Very handy to have all of those. And to be fair, I should have had it all anyway. And I was going to guess them. Well, I got most of them horribly wrong because I don't understand how we can have shipping containers and all the shipping containers, the sizes are different. And so the offices as well. There's no standard format. Well, at least I have the dimensions now and I can crack on. It's snowing. Not what we planned in any of our forecasting. Would have preferred it at Christmas, but you know, I didn't really dream of a snowy January, but we are where we are. And now I'm going to have um, meetings with my sales team one after the other. I asked them both to put together a proposal for the coming year. New clients we're going to target, where they think our strengths and weaknesses are and what I can do more to support them and any other general business. So that's going to start any moment. Tuesday, 7 a.m., I'm in the yard. On Sunday, Asheville Weekly, episode 168 was out because there's a two-week delay. And uh, I sat down with my sales team yesterday and salesman Sam, who handles all the ready-mix concrete, said that something I said in the episode when I was in the hospital waiting for surgery, he asked me if I bumped my head. He said he was hiding behind the cushion listening to me talk. He's talking about the concrete batch plant that I'm weighing up because I said that we're gonna be using some recycled material, which is good, uh, for the lesser mixes. Sam has informed me we are not going to be using any recycled material because with the structural work and the massive pours we're gonna be doing, multiple level structures for some of the huge formwork and construction companies, none of them are gonna be slightly lesser mixes. None of them. And apparently we were never gonna use it and I shouldn't have said it because I might scare people off. 
So, <laughs> I take it back. And truth be told, if we were gonna create any recycled material, it would be from screening and crushing, and it would be a Type 1 or a 6F5, which is crushed down demolition rubble, a mix of brick and concrete and tiles and other bits and pieces. But actual recycled sand and shingle, we don't actually produce it, and we don't have a wash plant. A wash plant will basically take the soil and wash it and take the sand and take the stone out of it and then segregate it. We don't have that either. So, the team are right. I am wrong. I'm gonna go back to the drawing board on the batch plant. We won't be using recycled material. And at long last, the train has arrived. And thank goodness, because we have absolutely no type one left in the yard. Get in. Miserable. No, I'm not miserable, man. I'm all right, man. The train's here. I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm not miserable. I'm not, I just, I just thought he's just gonna give me some bad news. Have you got any bad news for me? No, I don't think so. There's always bad news, but whether it's bad enough to bother telling you about that, it's another matter, isn't it? We need to get ready for the decorative, but it. Well, I was gonna say it's probably have to start Saturday, but between Saturday and Monday, the whole yard's gonna need to be scraped really to yeah, make sure yeah, that yeah. it's clean because we don't know where he's gonna be able to offload the train and we need to be ready for him mm -hmm. to drop it. We can't have the shovel sitting there and him offloading it to the shovel because it'll take too long. It's 22 wagons as well, 1,650 ton. You're gonna need the whole four hours to offload that. He is, yeah. Your tire get fixed, yeah? It's got a spare on it at the moment. The tire's knackered, it's a new, another new tire. We'll have to put it on you. They ordered it yesterday, so... We'll driving around with a spare wheel, I'm making ready. us look like some bums. Director of operations, right. <laughs> a spare wheel. <laughs> new tire that lasted less a new, than a week. A new tire that lasted less than a week. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Time is 6.37. I'm going for a drive in the yard. Everyone has gone home. I heard a noise, what sounded like a train offloading. I know we didn't have a train. And there's another company quite far in the distance who also have a rail yard and they are offloading a train at this time, which isn't normal. No doubt, I will get the blame for it. And they will say, he offloaded a train at night. Let's stone him on the high road. So let me just take a little drive, see if I can hear it just to get some evidence and a recording that in fact it wasn't me on this day at this time in the dark of the night. Just going to have a look as well at one of the Scania's earlier. Nathan's lorry had a problem, the knock sensor had gone. So Scania had to come in, change the knock sensor, not the one inside like the exhaust unit, the one which is on the outside. And also today, the work started on our water tank for the volumetric. So the process here is you cut out the section, like the neck, the damaged area, and then you kind of make a plate and another plate and you put them together inside the plastic tank to hold it together and that makes it nice and strong and almost like new. Unfortunately, I can share some of that with you. No, I can't hear it. I know the sound of a train offloading. And I know that that train being offloaded was not us. So maybe I'll hang around for a little while longer. If I don't hear anything, then I'm gonna try and head to the gym and continue to try and rehabilitate this shoulder. And that is it for Tuesday. Wednesday morning, I'm not in the yard. I'm at MP Moran's in Watford for a meeting. Morning. 
walking down the aisles in a builder's merchant. It's been a long time. I remember many a year, first thing in the morning in a builder's merchant, trying to pick all the stuff we need for the day, or if we could manage to get there the evening before we would do it. Long time ago, Moran's in Wilsdon was open on a Saturday. So what we used to do, make a list on Friday, we used to go work early Saturday morning, and then Saturday before Moran's closed, we used to try and go and load up everything we need for Monday. Now, bigger deliveries of like lengths of timber, ply, plasterboard, those could get delivered on a truck, but the small bits and pieces, like, you know, your tape measure, pencil, screws, and the stuff that you want to physically touch with your hand that you need. Moran's have made a couple of changes in it. Like they got a new system. There's the normal, what I thought was trade counter but they've changed it they've got a counter where they do the quotations but as that takes quite a bit of time they now have an express counter where somebody who wants one thing can run in buy it and get out of here very quickly and they've got loading bays outside as well now so you get told what loading bay to go to and you can get loaded even quicker and safer so you can come into this builders merchants get all the bits you need and you can also have the concrete all on your mp moran's account loving it Meeting started about concrete, but the meeting evolved, as many meetings do. This is Moran's outside area. They're a massive landscaping supplier. And as you know, we're gonna be selling decorative aggregates very soon. On Tuesday the 16th, which is next Tuesday, we have the slate coming in all the way from the north of Wales. We have the plum, we have the blue, and we have the gray. We're gonna bring some into Moran, some of their flower beds here and dress areas, we'd like them to show clients what it looks like. So they can see what it looks like wet, what it looks like dry, and they can see all the different types of slabs, block work, and they can say, I'll have that, I'll have that, I'll have that. I love partnerships like this where both parties are benefiting and we can try to push on and make it happen. And then in April, when we start to bring the fire red granite material from Scotland, I'll also get some of that in here. I was about to leave Moran's and then at the corner of my eye, I looked on a Moran's desk and there was one of these little skip holders from another company, which wasn't Asheville. The disrespect at which I felt, I couldn't contain myself. I had to go over and pick it up and had a look. And to be honest, like, it was quite decent. They had like little, little bits of storage in it. I have pledged I will have Asheville ones made immediately post haste and then they'll be available on thisisashville.com. That's where we sell all the merch. Nice, but I can't have that. And then I went to leave again. And it just so happened that at the quotation counter, somebody asked about concrete. I was with Sam and Sam dived right in there and started discussing concrete and the offering we provide. If anyone's at the counter in Moran's and they say, I'd like to buy some mesh. Are you buying mesh to pour a slab? Yes, who are you getting the concrete from? Straight away, chance favors the prepared mind. And there was Sam, dive right in there. Now I'm on the way back to the yard. And right now, in Southern Vulcanizing, they are about to start work on the volumetric, which has just been sprayed and had the artwork done. You see, the boys have already started work, got the auger off. They're gonna replace this bottom boot cover, because you can see that's quite worn. It's got some holes in it. And the screw that takes the concrete up the auger, they have to weld some new flights at the top and the bottom, and they're gonna replace all the wear tips. Give the lorry just a general going over. They have found something on this belt that pushes the aggregates out. It's a chain link belt with some slats on the bottom, which guide the belt along. Some of the barrels on the chain link have worn, so the belt's starting to drop slightly, but it doesn't really make sense for us at the moment to change that just yet because we've still got probably six months left in that belt for the money it's going to cost to replace it we're not really going to do that straight away get the lorry on the road as soon as possible get it earning a bit of money and then we'll monitor that little issue and see how we get on Going for a walk in the yard to clear my head. I've noticed that we have put the signs on in preparation for the new decorative material coming in next week. The 40 mil gray slate, 40 mil blue slate, and the 40 mil plum slate. Not too pleased that we've already managed to put <laughs> the wrong material in the 40 mil blue slate bait, but no doubt that will be cleaned out in the coming days and we have till next Tuesday. <sighs> 
first day. Not in the yard. I'm in a field in the middle of nowhere. You saw months back we were planning an outdoor space for a client of ours and we were reconfiguring all their living areas and giving them a double height kitchen and we stopped talking about the project because the client in fact sold the property so they didn't want to do the work. However, the client was happy with the architectural services they received and they have now decided that on their new plot of land they've called us back. This is a plot of land with no living residents here but there are two brick structures which are dilapidated and falling apart. Now, we don't know what the council or local authorities will accept here. So we're just assessing the size and we're gonna talk with the client about what he wants. We have to kind of guesstimate with a project like this, what could possibly be accepted because we don't want to just apply for something in planning that we know 100% will be rejected. This isn't as straightforward as applying for four meter by eight meter rear extension and you know that your planning's coming in about 10 weeks. This is gonna be a bit more different and complicated. So this is an old brick kiln, I think. This is where they used to bake bricks. Hopefully I'm not going into some spider's den that's gonna wrap me up and wow. Bit of barbed wire there, some posts for some fencing. It's all like the underground structure, egg-shaped, self-supporting, firm base some steel supports along the front here. Here's the chimney, probably when they were baking. This is the extraction. Oh yeah, and Sam the architect's here. Investigation number two. Da 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 da. Whoa. Ow. Right, structure is somewhat different. We have a brick exterior again, but we have a timber roof. On top of the timber roof, it is clad with this sheeting you can see here. Brick pillars, can't tell you much about the foundations, but they're still standing. Oh, we have some hay. I assume the client buying this has inherited the hay. To be honest, the brickwork looks in pretty good nick. There's not really anything here we could use to create a home where somebody would live, but if we can do some investigation into the historical significance, see the history of the building and maybe find some pictures of what it used to look like and try to replicate that some way or tie in the features, maybe the council might, you know, take a view. But we feel that they're gonna ask for ecological surveys to make sure that there are no endangered species or animals living within this. We haven't seen any signs, we haven't seen any drop-ins. Not that I am an animal specialist. And in the yard, the train has arrived. You're saying there could be bats or newts? Yes. Just have you know that Terry in the yard, he is a newt specialist. We had a golf course where there were newts and we managed to save their natural habitat. Bats we would see. Bats, not necessarily. They have a roosting season. So depending on the time of the year, you'd have to wait. So the survey will have to be carried out. And again, that would depend on the time of the year. Could it not be argued that as the real life Batman me turned up and no bats swarmed around me, that there are no bats here? <laughs> could, wait could it be we could submit that to the council? Well, obviously if Batman turns up and they don't fly around him, then there are no bats here. Good luck with that, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> well, we won't be submitting that. On the way back to the yard, thinking about a meeting, which I had with my CFO, Donica. He showed us our group accounts and we were relatively happy with it. But he said to me, are there any other ways you think we could improve, we could save, you know, we could get that bottom line up, like when you take away all your costs from your revenue. Now at the time I said, no, we've done everything. But since I have thought about it, in order to do it in some areas, I'm gonna have to deal with new companies which I've never dealt with in the past. And construction companies, especially businesses like us, which are multifaceted, people, when they walk in the door, and rightly so, they don't understand the company. There's a lot to get your head around. And I end up spending hours, days, weeks, communicating, going back and forth, providing information, just so they can form a picture. And sometimes I've done all of this and then they've gone, oh, sorry, we can't do it. And when you repeatedly do this, this exercise, like it's a lot of time and energy that goes into 
not a lot. I gotta try and think of a way or maybe make one package which explains everything about the business and just whenever someone asks a question, just hand it over to them as long as I've made them sign an NDA, which basically means they can't go and speak our business everywhere. But then again, some of the information isn't relevant in other fields and it's far too much information and then people are gonna to have to sift through it to find what they need to get an understanding. And then sometimes people say, the best way to get an understanding of the business is to talk to me because I've lived and breathed it but I don't have the time to do that. I'm trying to think of the best way to approach it and to create a healthier bottom line without compromising on what we're doing and using our existing infrastructure. Are we utilizing what we have 100%? No, we can do more. Why aren't we doing more? Why aren't we doing more materials? Oh, well, cost of rail haulage, suppliers who have relationships with people near us who won't supply us with material. There's factors, there's reasons. There's always a reason why not. I'm trying to find the reason to make it work and how I can find savings and efficiencies to push the company forward, to reinvest it. You can't milk the cow while it's a calf. If you try to milk that cow while it's a calf, it won't grow well. You have to grow that cow fully, make sure it's healthy, make sure it's been raised well, and then you can milk it, but in a controlled manner so it can still preserve its health and continue to generate milk which isn't sour. Because if the milk turns sour, I ain't the type of person who's gonna drink it. I hope that analogy made sense and I hope you picked up on that film. If you're serious, write in the comments what that film was. The first Welsh Slate train comes in next Tuesday. Good girls. going back and forth telling you for a while about the company that owed us the 57 grand what turned into the 60 grand what's now turned into 61 grand they kept going back to the judge with things which were basically nonsense but this morning the judge's team they thrown out their defense because their defense really made no sense because before they said yeah we owe we're going to do a payment plan then they said we didn't know it then they just tried to put a load of paperwork through the court system just to delay the process. So now we are just waiting for a judgment in place so we can chase the money. But there's, we're still a very long way away. If somebody owes you money and they wanna make it complicated, they can just keep throwing things at it and just keep delaying. And then right before it's time to pay, they could just pay you just then or make you an offer or try to then have a payment plan after all of this, after we spent all of this money and all of this time. But we are still fighting the fight. And now Ben is gonna load a three ton machine on the flatbed for delivery tomorrow morning. Friday morning, I'm not in the yard. At the refurbishment project, we are boarding up some of the bedrooms and we're nearly finished in the loft. We're talking in the master bedroom about the locations of touchscreen panels and switches on the wall. You step into the room here, double doors. On this side, we're gonna have a touchscreen panel and we're gonna have a keypad. Now there's gonna be a lot on this keypad because we've got electric blinds all over these windows. We have underfloor heating, we have air conditioning, we have the functions of all the music in the house, the TV. But with a touchscreen panel, you should be able to navigate your way through it and the keypad should be a quick way uh, to turn lights on and off or close blinds. Or you can do it on your phone, whichever you're more comfortable with. Now the bed is here. So on either side of the bed, the keypad will be just above the dressing table so you can do it all from that area. And then over here, we have a pillar, what we have to box in. And we're gonna put a socket on the face of it, just in case. We still don't know, will the TV be on this wall or will the TV come out from the bed or where will the TV come from? So we're gonna run the TV cables in the these two areas. When we've run these cables, we'll be able to start closing this room off totally. 
moving into the master dressing area. Now there's gonna be a motion sensor that turns on some of the lights when you walk in, but the overall control to turn all of them on, that keypad will be right here. Fitted cabinets on all of these walls. We have the master ensuite here. Now you can see the difference in the wall here. We have two different types of blocks. Where it changes, everything before is an external wall. Now all the external walls have a 60 mil insulation with plasterboard, 72 mil build up in total, which ends here. But we do not need to do it on this wall. We will use dot and dab and put plasterboard on. But if we have a build up of 72 mil here, and then we have like a 30 or 40 mil here, there's gonna be like an area where the wall goes back, which could be a dust trap and wouldn't look nice. So this is the solution. Under this lintel, we can cut off some of these blocks to make the entrance that bit bigger. Then we're gonna continue the 72 mil across this entire wall, so the whole wall looks flush and we have a larger opening. Originally, the plan, say the door was gonna open this way, which would mean that the light switches were here. We've changed that plan because we have a lovely bath freestanding right in front of us. We have the lovely shower area here. We're gonna put the door on this side. So the door opens onto the toilet. So when you open the door, straight away, you see all the lovely features. That means we need to move the keypad that was here and we'll have to move it over to this side. In this bedroom, the electrics are done. So you can see us boarding up. And for the first time, you can see the thickness of this insulation and plasterboard that I've been talking about. Now it's on this wall and this wall because they are external, not on that wall. To finish this area, we're gonna cut this and then have a windowsill which overlaps. We decided on the keypads here. We've marked them on the wall. Our little pencil markings that look like me with a crayon. You can see where you enter the room here and you can see on either side of the bed. Walking into the next bedroom, we have had to make another change. Originally, we were gonna have the door here. You can see the lintel, so the door open into the room. But we have a small hallway here, and it doesn't make any sense to take space out of the bedroom by putting the door here. So we're gonna have to take out this lintel, take out some blocks, move this lintel as high as we can to try and get a flush ceiling, move back here, and we're gonna put a new door frame lintel in here so the door actually opens here. Let the door open onto the wall because it's dead space in the hallway anyway. So when you get through the door, you're into a room without any doors obstructing you. Now, if we cannot raise this high enough to match the ceiling height here, then we'll create a little drop down just over the head of the hallway, which is pretty much what you would see when you walk into any hotel room because they've got services there. Or the Central London Muse home, what we did, click here to watch that video, where you leave the master bedroom walking into the ensuite. There's a fantastic example of it there. The keypad for the room will be over here, be on either side of the bed as well. Because we haven't boarded this up, you can see the cabling going down to the bedside cabinets. If you look over here, you can see the services, the downpipe from the loft, and you can see all the hot and cold water. There's gonna be a cupboard covering this in the ensuite of that bedroom. You can see the mixers already in the wall. These are the wall mixers for the two sinks. This is the shower mixer, and you can see the pipes running up to the shower head. And if you look over there, you can see the ply that we fitted within the wall, so we have a firm fixing for the mixer for the bathtub. We missed the install of the staircase. It happened over the Christmas period. They don't waste any time, but I had to let them continue. Don't worry about me, come on. Okay. We no longer have to go up a ladder to go up to the loft. We're gonna remove these pieces of timber and we're gonna put larger ones which support the entire step. This should stop any creaking in the future. We're gonna build a wall out here to here and we're gonna put a full height door that opens out this way. That way you have all the storage what goes underneath. Finishing of the stairs. Now on the other side of this is the soundproof area in the loft. 
This insulation is going to be here, and then here we're going to have 15 mil board, we're going to have the acoustic mat, and then 15 mil board. So this is going to be built out to around here. If you look down there, you can see this, the frame of the stairs. Now we want the stairs to look flush, like they're coming straight out of the wall. So we're going to build from here, directly straight up. And then we're going to have a straight wall from here all the way up to roof level. Finally, you can see the soundboard everywhere here. Look at the lovely handiwork between the insulation. These are the Ventaxia pipes for the ventilation system, which have been put between and expanding foam on them. If you look around the window area, you can see some finished areas with the double board and acoustics. We can't close the area here in the middle because we need the air conditioning pipes from the unit there to fit through here, work out what we're doing with the grills, and we also have some lighting going in. This is the Ventaxia unit. You can see these fixings that we've put in place in order to ensure that none of these pipes are rattling. Sometimes in a house you can hear things rattling and think, why can I always hear that noise at night? To finish over here, we need to put 15 mil board and then we're gonna put more shuttering ply on the front. We're gonna put insulation here, shuttering ply on here, and we're gonna put another skin of plasterboard here once we put the acoustic membrane. But this area should also be closed off and finished very soon. That's it for the refurbishment project. Heading back to the yard. You on the way to a job? Yeah. Have you got another job after that? No, I do exchange, local one. Yeah. Around the corner. Yeah. And after I got one delivery, first yard. Okay, when you're finished for the day, there's a grab box in the middle of the yard. That yellow one? Could you take it and move it over there, please? Thank you, George. Thank you. We're still trying to completely clean the area where the decorative material is gonna come in next Tuesday, but it's proving difficult because it's very muddy. Oh, and Liebert and Scania are both here. What, what is this now? What, what has broken down now? This is a deep dish. What's the matter with it? Um, Air leak, yeah? yeah? Good to go back on the road, yeah? yeah of course. Nice. The time is 1.39. I've gone for another walk in the yard, trying to work on the appraisal that I was telling you about, the new business I'm really excited about. I am working on a business model. The entire time is all I think of, because it's a big business. I have taken that appraisal as far as I... Carry on, mate. Don't worry about me. Carry on. <laughs> I have taken that appraisal as far as I possibly can. I believe it stacks up. It's now time to hand that over to my CFO. Now he needs to translate that into something that external people can have a look at. My formula shows all the figures and it makes sense, but it's very basic. He's gonna uh, convert it and translate it into financial language where people can talk about EBITDA. EBITDA. Don't worry about me. I was told the lads, don't worry about the camera, you carry on. Cash flow is always challenging December and January, but we have a lot of people who are not paying us, they're about to pay us, and we have a lot of expenses that we are trying to pay. And of course, the people who we're trying to pay, it's not their problem, but we are not getting paid and everything is just dragging along. People are getting annoyed with me and rightly so. This HMRC outstanding VAT, they still won't give us the money back. No matter what conversation we have, there's always a, okay, resend this, resend that, call us on this day, out of the office, no answer on the phone. And we're up in the region of, I don't know, 170 VAT, like 170 grand is 170 grand, irrespective of how big your, your company is, how cash rich you are or you aren't. And we need the money and it's really messing us up. Like it's causing a big problem. Like, uh, we've got commitments which need to be honored because I've given my word. And now I'm gonna find money to plug holes. Now it's gonna be all right. It always is all right in the end, but sometimes it just takes so long. It could take another three months to recover from it and then you're fine. 
and then you have to try to plan and forecast ahead that this doesn't happen to you um, next December and January. And still haven't heard what's happening with the uh, trains next week because all of a sudden there's a train coming in on Tuesday as the decorative, but every other train now wants to come on Tuesday and now they can't. Ugh, just... It's Friday and I'm stressed in the yard. And where are you Monday? Uh, I'm up in Hard Plant in Leyland. What time do you start? 8am. Having a light in you? No, I'll be, I'll be, up, I'll be up early. Five, half five, gym. Have you got half five gym, yeah? Yeah. Have you checked if there's a gym up there? Uh, not yet. I'll do, <laughs> that, I'll do that when I... I've got three pages worth of questions. How do they calculate their delivery charge and what factors do they take into account? So like, is it distance based on, I guess, how many miles from their depot? Is everyone done individually? So does okay. it vary? How often are the machines serviced? And is this the same for every manufacturer? Does it kind of vary? Is that a knock at the door? Nah. We're waiting for some lights that we need for some filming we're doing on Monday. What you need to ask him is that, that process. Mm -hmm. And then when the machine's dropped off and when they collect the machine, bringing it back, what is reasonable wear and tear, how they charge it, or the state of the machine when it goes back into stock and just their general interaction, how they work as a team and how they work with people talking to them about plant and any cross-selling they're doing. Mm -hmm. So come back here, a wealth of knowledge. Be a sponge, Liam, soak it all up. Yes, I will be. And dress warm, because it's colder up north. Don't come back here with the sniffles. Yeah. <laughs> oh, hold on, are you playing football Sunday morning before you go? Playing football tomorrow, man. You're playing football tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. What if you get injured? Uh, I'll be fine. You'll be fine, yeah? yeah? Are you playing or managing? Playing. You're playing. Yeah. What position? I uh, don't know yet, because um, it's my first game back after my hamstring, so. Okay. I'll be starting from the bench. We're saying you're going to come on like Super Sug, Oli, Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Oh, you don't know who Oli Gunnar Solskjaer is. I don't do know you? who No, but you know him as the Man United manager. You don't know him as a man to come on and score goals, or do you? I've seen it. You've seen, you've seen it? Yeah. I'm showing my age there. Right, well, <laughs> good luck Cheers, for Monday. Thank you. Try to learn as much as you can. Well, and then good. come back and teach us all something about plant hire, young Liam. Yes, I'll try my best and I'll be a sponge. Good lad. It's Saturday. We're not in the yard. Foxy is down in London. Sir Fox a lot himself. He disappointed all of us because he didn't come down in the chopper. He came on the train and I collected him from Euston Station. And we are going to meet Mr. Michael O'Donovan. No doubt when we get there, he's gonna lay into us straight away. It won't be for long though, will it? No, it won't be for long. It'll be in a coma by two. <laughs> in the yard today, the usual carry on. We're still trying to prepare for the decorative material that's gonna come in on Tuesday. We're loading lorries. We got a few bags of four to 20 limestone going out. We wanna put them on the grabs today so they can be delivered first thing on Monday morning. This is gonna be fun. This is gonna be fun. Stop stop it. Don't do that. What are you doing? Right, where is our tire cover? Not put back Someone nicked my tire cover, come on. No, let's go. I can't sit in that baby seat. It's not a baby seat, you're thick. Come on. One leg up here. That's it. I have to press no, the brake. Got... <laughs> no, get your foot off the brake. You can't have your foot on the brake. Oh, this ain't gonna work. Of course it is. <laughs> You've got to be joking. Get in. Oh, I've got to sit this way then. Why don't you buy a proper car? You've got two lumps in here. Two lumps? <laughs> two, two lumps. Oh, you lot of them. You've got to be joking. You must be nearly Give not. me a seatbelt. Your seatbelt. Where are we going to grab it from? The torsion is. <laughs> <laughs> He's not soft <laughs> enough. <laughs> oh, that's my what? Oh, yeah, trying to eat me watch now. Feed it. Uh, <laughs> Let me get it off. <laughs> you're coming back to train station with me. You're coming north. All right. Oh, mine going. If you're the heli go Peter, I go north for the heli go Peter. That's it's always. called a helicopter, Michael. Yeah, but I've got one of them as well. <laughs> you don't? Do you have a helicopter? Where's your helicopter then? It's parked in the yard. <laughs> All right, cool. It's Saturday. And we're in the yard. I'm <laughs> <laughs> right, three 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 three. It's Saturday and we're in the hairdresser's car. <laughs> it's um, Saturday and we're three potatoes in a lunchbox. <laughs> <laughs> Why can't you buy yourself a proper car? Indicator, yeah, in, uh, yeah, there is an indicator, but I've got to let the other cars pass first. No, but you got, where are we going? Straight through, just keep driving, please. 
Right. Are we going to your house? We're going, we're going to your house? Yeah, 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 we're going to go to someone's house. Where you been, man? I've been celebrating my retirement. <clears throat> and now I've got a pain in my neck for trying to look out the window. Can I break this off? No, you cannot <laughs> break it off. Oh, is that an electronic? Yeah. It's a camera. It's a good thing too, with this, with this big granite head in the way, I'd hardly be able to see anything, would I? You have got a bullet, haven't you? Yeah, well, we better big sweet that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't like this on the end of your nose, would you? No. <laughs> Why have you all got your arms crossed like that? Because I'm praying. <laughs> what else is he going to put them? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I, put them out, I put them out through the sunroof, only we haven't got one. <laughs> this has got to be the most uncomfortable motor I've ever sat in. Worse than the Leyland Octopus. Oh, no, Leyland Octopus wouldn't be like this. Look, we'll sell you Prime. <laughs> <laughs> That's actually for Paul's kids. Is it? Yeah, yeah it's a gift from me. About all that will get off him. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't give you the flu if he had it. <laughs> a man in a blazer like that giving it to me, can you imagine? Yeah. We've got Denzel over here. Yeah, yeah. It is it? Only... boy in runners. This uh, time next year. This, this time, time next year, year we'll, we'll be millionaires. millionaires. <laughs> can we get like O'Donnell's Weekly, Asheville Weekly, and Fox Weekly? We could, but I need more yeah. editors. Uh, the pressure's all on me. And no, I, it's not the pressure uh, on the pressure for tires in cars. Pressure's for said the geezer who's retired. Why don't you hire your man back to him? Who? Oh, Will. Will won't come back with him. Will said to me, he said he got more money doing Penny for the guy. <laughs> <laughs> left, right, right, right. Left, left, left right. right. Which, which way? Which way? Wherever that way is. We've only got 180 miles to go, and you can't be in it. <laughs> <laughs> We're on the way to the farm. Michael is going to sell Mr. Fox one of his old vintage lorries, which is actually the newest one in his fleet, because he hasn't got a fleet anymore. No, we are not selling yeah, We're not. You might not know we it yet. We can bully him, but he ain't bullying me. No, not in there, in there you I, I, I know, Michael. What? Mm. Oh, you live in an industry, <laughs> 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 Yeah, we do, is that? Oh, you would have a long drive, mate, wouldn't you? Of course he's got a long drive. You wouldn't think he'd put a little bit of paving or some decorative aggregates around there. That's Listen, here's what we can do. I've got a train of plum slate, blue slate, and grey slate coming in on yeah, Tuesday. You want I can silly money for it, though, didn't you? Silly money for it. No, I'd just like to make a living if I could, please. Who's this confused dog chasing his tail? She's all right. Where am I going? Cash break down, I've got to get the keys. Why are the dogs barking at me? Because they're going to get you. Wait, oh, I need to get out now. But well, how can you gonna... get out? The dog's going to bite one of us. Where... No, I'm going to have to get out. Don't well, do the safety belt let me out. And let me get out Paul first. Paul. Wait, hold on, don't let him. Wait, hold on, wait, wait, hold on one sec. No, Paul, don't open the door, the dog. He's the fella you got to watch. No, she's all right. Flashback to weekly when I was talking to Michael about the fish that I needed to find a home for, and he wouldn't help me to rehouse. There's a guy at the gym who's got this big fish in a pond. Which fella can I provide a home for? I don't know about that fella that looks down the bottom. He looks nasty, he looks vicious. Look at Michael's house, and he wouldn't help me rehouse those fish I had in weekly. New addition to Michael's fleet. All right, so now we're in the restoration shed. But what are you planning on doing with all these lorries? Doing them up, that's gonna be... I've got one round of backs done. This one's done, everything's done on this. But we've got 10 of us painting, which I'll send to Radford's for painting. If jo John is the man for painting. This your old man's one, yeah? Yeah, that's in there. That's my one out of the tea cabinet. You drive this, yeah? No, don't slam it. Close it gently. Did anyone shouted at you about closing that door? No, just shut it. Yeah, I, that was very, that was very that was, not, that was Northern violence, that was. Tell me about this, Laurie Michael. Bought it off the Fosses down in Gatwick. Bought it home, painted it our colours. It is absolutely mint. They spent a fortune on it, or whoever rebuilt it spent a fortune on it. Drives like a brand new lorry. We always run these. We run loads of these Maggie Deutzes. Can I have a go? You can have a go, but you'd never better drive it. Why wouldn't I be able to drive it? Because it's uh, for that's an old boy's lorry, not a young fella's lorry. You're too young. You wouldn't better change gears fast enough. Why wouldn't I be able to change gears fast enough? Because it's, uh, like I told you, it's a old boy's lorry. It's an experienced man. you got to change gears like you stole it. <laughs> <laughs> they come off of... Gavin Griffin in Scotland. Michael, how big is the collection now? It's 40 odd. 40, 40 vintage lorries? Yeah. Yeah, watch your head. Because you've got some canister on you. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going, you <laughs> 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 oh. 
There's my one, that's, that's the one. That's what I remember going to work with the old man in the old Tim's traders. What, you can't get through here? If you can't get through here, I have to get through here. Oh no, come on man, it's, it's light work for me. Oh no, hold on a minute, that is a bit tight. Oh, oh my. That turned the light off on me, he's a. <laughs> it's not way to treat your guests. What car do you want to do it in? We've got to do it in the Jag now. We're going to do it in this old Jag. The two of them are going to sit in the back, and somehow I've, I'm the designated driver. And I'm going to drive us around Central while the two of them wear fur coats smoking cigars. Do we think that'll be a good video? But there's something going wrong here now, so we need to get it repaired. What is it, Michael? It's all, what does it do? You go boom, 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 with the gear stick. <laughs> here we are in the office. Look at that. So you did keep it. Asheville, O'Donovan Brothers, Kaylee Plant Hire, and Ryan O'Donovan Haulage. So when you're wondering why Michael isn't in the videos no more, it's because he's at home working on his collection and working with his sons and pushing their businesses forward. So me and Paul thought on a Saturday afternoon, we come kidnap up and harass him, kidnap him, kidnap him, see if we can nick a lorry or two off him. We haven't succeeded. Paul, we made any failed, deals yet? Failed miserably. We failed miserably. So we haven't managed to get anything off him yet. Yes. But it's always nice to catch up and go for everything and drive Michael mad. And that's it for Asheville Weekly episode 171. Click here for the Asheville website. Click here, subscribe to our channel. Click here, see an Asheville video you may not have seen before. And click down here for last week's episode, which was number 170.